Good afternoon, everybody. Welcome back to Italy, round four of the FIM Motocross World Championship with me, Paul Malin. You join us live, as always. And up next, the final race of the weekend, MXGP race two, all 30 minutes plus two laps of it. What a fabulous part of the world we are in as well. Trentino and uh, the arch, the famous arch down the road, but we are in the shadow of the Dolomite Mountains. We're on the shores of Lake Garda. And it really is a hotbed of sports and sporting uh, activities. All kinds of events are run here. And where else? I mean, look at the fantastic location where we're at. But this weekend, it's all about the FIA Motocross World Championship, MXGP. And as we said, it's round four. And here we are at Trentino, the circuit of Pietra Murata, stunning locations. And uh, the atmosphere continues to build ahead of this second MXGP race. It was fantastic the way that MXGP Race 1 played out. And uh, from that side of things, this is where we are. 14 degrees right in the north of the country, just south of the uh, Swiss border. The red, white and green flares. We've got the uh, red and yellow flares for uh, Tony Cairoli and Tim Geiser, respectively. There'll be a lot of noise in the next few moments' time because this 1,550-metre-long racetrack has uh, provided us some with some fantastic action so far today. Well, if you missed race one, here's a quick look at what happened a little earlier today. From the centre of the grid, Tony Cairoli came across Tim Geiser, who got squeezed to the bank, but somehow came out in fifth place around the first turn. But it was Cairoli with the Fox hole shot, Lupino and Ivo Monticelli making it a one, two, three for Italy as they came over the line. Gauthier Paulin was fourth, but watch this, Geiser came in, slammed the Frenchman, almost took him off the bike. And then a mistake from Monticelli allowed uh, Geiser to get into third. Top of the next hill, Geiser was through. And then he found his way past Lupino to move up into second and gave chase to Kai Rowley. Paul Lamb was on the charge and uh, he quickly got himself up into third place. And so too, Arno Tonus following him through there. Tonus eventually came home in fourth place. Paul Lamb's move on uh, Monticelli was there. Max Anstey wasn't so fortunate. He should line up for race two, though, on his standing construct KTM. But Jeremy Seaworth made a move on the number six of Benoit Pacharel. He eventually came home in eighth. The two Huskies of uh, Arminas Jasikonis and Paul Jonas were also ganged up on the Kawasaki rider from France, but it was AJ who moved around the outside of his teammate to go into ninth. But on the final couple of laps, all eyes were on these two. They were never more than two seconds apart. Kai Rowley was under the cosh, and the team couldn't look on. He bobbled. Geiser found a way through, and right in front of his home contingent, Kai Rowley tried to respond immediately, but the door was shut firmly in his face. He lost the front going into a corner, he lost his advantage as well. And that allowed Cairoli to get back on the rear wheel. And despite setting the fastest lap on the final lap, Tony Cairoli was denied victory in race one in front of his home fans. It was Geiser who took the win on his Honda. Tony Cairoli was second. Gorce Paulan, Ono Tonus and Ivo Monticelli rounded out the top five here in Italy. And that was just a fraction of the action that we saw in MXGP Race 1. Anyway, Lisa Leyland's down on the grid a few moments ago. I believe she has a rather special guest with her from the world of skiing. Let's hear what uh, she has to say and hear what he has to say. We are almost ready for the final race of the day, MXGP Race 2. But before we do, we have a special guest here at MXGP. It's Luca Di Ali Prandini. Uh, Luca, this isn't your first time, is it, at MXGP Race? How does it feel to be back here on the start line? No, it's like I came uh, here every year. And for me, it's a special uh, track because uh, normally I used to ride here also motocross. So for me, it's, uh, it's special to see the champions riding on, a, on my own truck. And of course, this area here in Trentino is pretty famous for sportsmen competing at a high level. You're a sportsman yourself. What does this area mean to you? I mean, being here in Trentino in Italy. Yeah, here in Trentino, especially also in uh, Garda, we can practice a lot of sports, uh, mountain bike, um, uh, motorsport, water sport. Uh, you, can, you can do whatever you want. It's a special place. Now, of course, in that first MXGP race, we saw Tim Geiser and Tony Cairoli so close. Who's your money on? 
Yeah, it was a nice battle uh, between uh, Tony and the uh, team. For sure, uh, as Italian, uh, I hope uh, Tony will win the battle. But um, it was nice to, to see that. I can't wait to find out what happened. Yeah, exactly. Have a great day. Thank you. Thank you. Okay, good luck to all the guys here. It's time for MHGP race two. Here's how the riders line up for MXGP race two. Exactly the same order as race one. Tim Geiser on pole after winning the qualifying race win yesterday. Tony Cairoli goes to the line second. Arno Tonus third, Ivo Monticelli fourth, Gauthier Paulin, Lupino, Paul Jonas, Jeremy Sewa, Sean Simpson and Anton Gohl. Tommy Searle will line up next and then Jeremy Van Horbeek, Julian Lieber, Arminas Jassikonis, Max Anstey, Clement de Salle, who's... Uh, on something of a damage limitation weekend this weekend, the Monster Energy Kawasaki rider just trying to pick up as many points as possible. Got a slight niggle. Was talking to the uh, team manager, uh, Francois Lemarier, earlier on this morning. And uh, very coy about the, uh, the situation there, but uh, did tell me exactly what it was. But anyway, let's see how he goes in this second race. Once again, the atmosphere is starting to build ahead of MXGP Race 2. As the riders make their way to the line for the final time of the weekend. There is Tony Cairoli, the Red Bull KTM rider. He was second in Race 1, got passed by Geiser. Four laps to go. And there is Tim Geiser. Are we going to see an upset of uh, monumental proportions? Only time will tell. NXGP race two about to get underway here. It's round four of the FI Motocross World Championship, the MXGP of Trentino. We are in northern Italy, just outside of Pietro Morata. There is Arno Tonus, the uh, Monster Energy Wilvo Yamaha rider. He crossed the line. Uh, well, in, in race one, actually, Arno Tonus came home in fourth place. And uh, his teammate, Gauthier Paulin, was there in third. We just saw Tony Cairoli. There he is, actually, in the middle of the gate on his uh, KTM. Guys are about four gates down, just in front of the uh, monster uh, backdrop. So that's where those two are. Here's Arminas Jassikonis on the right and Clement de Salle on the left. And, of course, uh, de Salle now on uh, 112 points. And AJ on 104 as they fight over fifth place in the championship standings. Tim Geiser was victorious in race one. There he is, just to the bottom right of your screen, alongside him, Jeremy Seaworth, the 128 of Monticelli, and then Tony Cairoli. And here is number 99, the standing construct KTM, Max Anstey. Anstey uh, fell from 15th on uh, lap six, and he did not rejoin the race. Well, he did briefly for two or three laps, but came out with a leg complaint. Jeremy Seaworth, Monster Energy Yamaha, MXGP. The official factory team. He looks pretty uh, confident. He's got some good support network here this weekend as well. Obviously, the Swiss have travelled south to get over the border. The Slovenians have travelled west to get here from uh, their homeland to Italy to support Tim Geiser and the whole of the country behind Tony Cairoli, Tony uh, Alessandro Lupino, and Ivo Monticelli there, the lead standing construct KTM rider in MXGP race one. There's JWR Yamaha, that can only be, I would think, uh, Anton Gold, 297, there he is. And he's pretty much in the centre of the gate. We have a green flag, we're getting ready to go racing. MXGP race two, 30 minutes plus two laps, the fly racing. 15 second board goes up for the final time this weekend. And as always, this final race deciding the outcome, the overall Grand Prix here in Italy. The MXGP of Trentino at Pietro Morata is about to get underway here. Look towards the centre gates. Tony Cairoli goes right and then he gives himself a big sweep, but it's Tim Geiser who crosses the foxhole shot line for the first time this year. Cairoli right there in second, Paul and third, Tonus four, Tommy Searle in fifth position as they hit the line for the first time. 
Anstey up the inside on his KTM of the number 100. Jassikonis around the outside on the number 27. The flares are lit here. The atmosphere, the cauldron. It is at boiling point in the early stages of this second MXGP race. And it's Geiser who leads the way. His fans have lit the candles. Cairoli right in his wheel tracks as we head uphill for the first time. Paul and there in third. Tonus four on the number four. Jassikonis, 27, almost gets caught there by the rider in blue. Tommy Searle on the Boss GP, Kawasaki. Jassikonis looks behind him to see the Brit right there. A difficult racetrack, a challenging racetrack. They've had a sighting lap prior to the start of the race here, but when you're there at full speed, it always feels a little bit different. The bike handles a little bit differently. The behavioural characteristics are certainly not the same as they are on a slow sighting lap as Jessiconis around the outside of Tonus. Tonus will have the better line going into it. He just closed the door. I thought he was going to take AJ's line there. Searle has been passed by Anstey. Anstey will flash by in a minute on orange. There he is. Even Monticelli around the outside on his KTM there in the uh, fluorescent colours goes past Tommy Searle as well at the bottom of the hill. So the Italians in full voice here and so too are the Slovenians. And Anstey, well, nursing a proper dead leg after race one, he's looking just to try and uh, get through this one, score points, and see if he can affect the, uh, the positions at the top end of the leaderboard in race two. Be interesting to see what the gap is, though, between Tim Geiser and Tony Cairoli as they hit the line for the first time. Jassikonis there denies Anstey a route through, but look at the gap already on the opening lap. A 46-4, a 47-7. The gap already more than two seconds between Geiser and Cairoli. Number four, Arno Tonus on his Yamaha in fourth place. Jessiconis just behind him in fifth place. As we look from space down to uh, the racetrack here, Tony Cairoli and uh, Tim Geiser. Geiser, your race leader, coming towards us for Team HRC. And Tony Cairoli right there in second. There's Gautier Paulant for uh, Monster Energy Wilbo Yamaha. There's his teammate Arna Tonus in fourth. Jassikonis the 27 in fifth. Anstey in sixth on the number 99. Seventh is Monticelli. Eighth, Tommy Sell. Ninth, Brian Bogers. Tenth, Glenn Coldenoff. Bernardini is 11th on the Gini, uh, Gidinelli uh, Yamaha. Twelfth is Benoit Pacharel on his Kawasaki. Thirteenth is teammate Lupino. Then we've got Tom Cock, Anton Gold, Jose Boutron. Jassikonis thinks better about railing it round the outside to find his way past the number four of Arno Tonus. Sean Simpson just inside the points in 19th place. But outside of the points, Jeremy Van Horvick pulls Jonas, Clement de Salle, and de Salle, I feel, is uh, going to pull out of this race. He's not circulated, he's not completed one lap. And so that is uh, a devastating blow for Clement de Salle on the Monster Energy Kawasaki. Plenty of time to go, though. There's your race leaders. Just about pick them out from uh, this high up. Geiser, that gap still, 2.2 seconds. Tony Cairoli maybe just taking a couple of laps to get himself into this one, but can't afford Geiser too much of a luxury at the head of the field here. Are we going to get a similar kind of race to what we had in the first outing between these two? Except at the moment, the shoe is on the other foot. It's the Slovenian who leads the Italian. The Frenchman just back there in third place, Gautier Paulin. And uh, in that first race, he uh, finished, what, 59, 53 seconds down on Tony Cairoli in that third place. And there are your top three, then Tonus in fourth. And uh, as it stands right now, it would be Guy Sakairoli, Paul Antonis, your top four riders this weekend in the uh, final classification. But as you can see from the top left of your screen, 25 minutes plus two laps to go here in MXGP Race 2. We are at round four of the FI Motocross World Championship. And it is the MXGP of Trentino at Pietra Murata. It's a little bit quiet out on track at the moment. Tony Cairoli will have his support network. Tim Geiser will have his, but as long as he stays here, Geiser's side, if you like, 
will be uh, silencing the Italians if he makes a mistake and Kai Rodi gets close or just ups his tempo to get onto the rear wheel of the Honda, then it will just definitely light up. And we might be in for uh, a fascinating second half of the race here in Italy. Geiser, Cairoli, Paul Anne separated by 5.2 seconds after three laps. Lap times 47.9, 47.7 for Geiser and Cairoli. So Cairoli pulling, um, pu picking up uh, two tenths on the uh, Slovenian. And then we've got Gautier Paul Anne at 48.1. Here's Cairoli. So, 23.45 to go. Oh, back end, just catching that rut there. Is Cairoli just winding himself up here? I mean, he's getting on a bit, but uh, you know what? He still performs at the very highest level, doesn't he? 34 years old. He's won the first three Grand Prix of the season. And uh, here he is going after Tim Geiser, the young pretender to his throne this year. Of course, Geiser, 2015 and 16 world champion, MX2 and MXGP back to back, and also doing that on a Honda. Here's Gautier Paulin. He's third on the Monster Energy Wilbo Yamaha. Nice line around the outside, similar to that of Ben Watson in the uh, second MX2 race. I'm sure there have been others, but uh, just Watson's name sprung to mind with that particular line on the racetrack. Anyway, Paulan heading downhill. Here's Geiser and Kai Rowley. 1.9 the gap at the end of lap three. We're working our way towards the end of lap four. Be interesting to see what that gap is. 1.9, has it gone to more than 1.9? Psychologically, that could be tough, and it is. It's 2.2, but fans on both sides of the, uh, the teams here and riders doing their best to re-energize. Tim Geiser doesn't need any re-energizing because uh, he is 2.2 seconds clear of Tony Cairoli on home soil. Or on the Italian's home soil, I should say. And they're just eking clear of uh, Gautier Paulin on that Yamaha back there in the uh, in third place. Anstey in again. Been one of them frustrating days. And he's just saying, look, there's no point, no point going out. Obviously, he had a uh, tyre or a wheel issue. They put the uh, the new wheel in, but he's already going to be, uh, well, he's outside of the points as it is now. He's 25th, dropping down uh, the leaderboard like a stone. So uh, Anstey then will leave here more than likely pointless. And he'll just try and refocus on Mantova in about a month's time. Twenty-one and a half minutes plus two to go here. MXGP race two, round four of the FIM Motocross World Championship. We are at the MXGP of Trentino in Pietra Murata, northern Italy. Tim Geiser grabbed the Fox hole shot, the first of the year for the Team HRC rider. And Tony Cairoli has been right there in his wheel tracks for every single one of the four laps that we've already had. This is lap five. We're coming towards the end of this fifth lap. And it's Geiser who continues to lead. What is the gap this time around, though? Because it was 2.2 seconds a moment ago. Back end just getting a little bit loose here on the Slovenian's Honda. The gap just down to just over two seconds. And... Uh, We've got a 147.2, so pulls another two tenths back on the race leader. Anstey has gone back out. He's a lap down. He keeps an eye on what's going on behind him. Here's Geiser. That gap still hovering around about two seconds. Back in the days when uh, Cairoli was uh, new to MXGP, he, you would just constantly see him sort of uh, get to that 10 minutes to go mark in the race before he turned up the pace. No matter where he was, uh, anywhere in the top three, top five, always keep a watching brief as to what's going on. Almost like he would lure you into a false sense of security. Is he going to do the same here to Tim Geiser? 
who knows? Five laps in, 19, 20 minutes to go. Uh, Geiser continues to lead. Cairoli, Paulin is third. Fourth is Tonus. Fifth is Jessiconis. Sixth, Monticelli. Seventh, Tommy Searle. Eighth, Brian Bogers, Glenn Koldenoff is nine, and Ben Pacharel is ten. Samuele Bernardini here in white. He's in 11th, but he's just been passed by fellow Italian. The number 77 of Alessandro Lupino. Jose Boutron is in tw uh, 13th place ahead of Anton Gold, Sean Simpson, Seba Briljakov, Tano Leo. Julian Lieber, Pascal Rauschenecker and Jeremy Van Horvick with Tom Cox just outside the top 20 points. Gap looks like it's gone out again. A 146.3, fastest lap of the race to uh, Tim Geiser, but he's only gained two tenths because Cairoli also in the 46. So anything Tim can do, Cairoli is matching. So he's staying with the race leader as it stands right now. I was talking to Lorenzo Resto, uh, who's very close to this team of uh, Tony Cairoli. He's in the break, and he was saying, uh, particularly in qualifying yesterday, that uh, the message from the pit crew was just to sort of wait, 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 be patient, and then push the last couple of laps. I wonder if we're going to see something very similar in the, uh, the latter stages of this race here. Jassiconis. Rockstar Energy Husfana Factory Racing continues to give chase to Arno Tonus on the Monster Energy Wilbo Yamaha. These two fighting over fourth place. Ivo Monticelli, fantastic Grand Prix he's having as well for Standing Construct KTM. He was fifth in race one, he's fifth in race two at the moment. Gauthier Paulin has uh, lapped Max Anstey. Anstey obviously knows that he's a lap down and he can sense the quicker guys coming through, but when he's this far down and out of the points as well in 29, just difficult to get yourself motivated to uh, just to try and score that one point. So is it just a, a matter of time before several more riders come by or is he just going to keep his tempo up and uh, try and treat it like a race training exercise? Who knows? Gap between the first two, though, after six laps was 2.2. They're getting ready to hit the line any moment now. Geiser and Kai Rowley. In fact, another fastest lap of the race for Geiser at 46.2. Tony Kai Rowley has lost a bit of time, I think. Uh, 46.0, he goes faster still. So uh, it is starting to come down. Two tenths here and two tenths there. Every little counts. Oh, Gautier Paulin. Still there in third place. He's got about seven seconds on his teammate. All of a sudden, Kai Rowley is right there, ready to pounce, and the fans are getting into it now as well. Can't afford a mistake, either one of these two. It's Geiser who continues to lead. Geiser, of course, victorious here in uh, 2015 in MX2, when he outdid Jeffrey Hurling's on the final lap. One of two Honda victories around this uh, Pietra Murata racetrack. The other one came back in 1994 in the old 500cc class. That was Billy Lyles, who was the third winner around this racetrack here at Pietra Murata. But look at Tony Cairoli closing in. He has just decided to go for broke here. He's got himself right on the rear wheel, and Geiser will know that he's right there. The atmosphere, again, starting to build. No looks over the shoulder yet, though, from the 243. Doesn't need to. He can probably hear the KTM booming down his left or right ear roll. Come on, come on. So Kai Rowley, right on the rear wheel of Geiser. 15 and a half minutes plus two to go. There is absolutely nothing in it. Geiser continues to lead. Kai Rowley less than a second behind with another fastest lap of the race. And we are getting ready to go racing here again between these two. Fifteen minutes plus two to go. Tony Cairoli steps out of his rut at the bottom of the hill. Geiser just a little short on top. In fact, both riders short on top. Not able to execute that nice sweeping line through the top left-hander as he was able to a couple of years ago, Tony Cairoli. But anyway, very vocal down there. And uh, Di Carli not happy with something.
You cannot take your eyes off this again, can you? Kai Rowley trying to use all of the racetrack. Of course, last year's winner not here. Jeffrey Hurlings, he went 1-1. DeSalle was on the podium. Kai Rowley was third overall. Just watch this coming out of the turn. Came out just a little bit offline. Was in with the markers, though. All of a sudden, Kai Rowley is alongside Geiser. Geiser knows he's there. He's got to stay patient as well, hasn't he, Geiser? Try not get flustered, but try saying that when you've got a nine-time world champion behind you. He's also the championship leader. And uh, Kai Rowley right there and a mistake from Geiser. Geiser runs wide. And Tony Kai Rowley gets their fans on the feet here. And lap nine was Kai Rowley time. Wow. In electric atmosphere here at Trentino. Pietro Morata. Geiser has to stalk Cairoli just like he did in race one. This place has just come alive, folks. 13 and a half minutes to go. Thirteen minutes plus two laps to go. Tony Cairoli is the new race leader, and here's how he did it just a few moments ago in uh, on the top end of the circuit. This was Cairoli making a mistake, lost some ground initially, but then Cairoli ran down the inside. He got the gap right down. It was a bobble from Geiser. Just felt the pressure from Tony Cairoli, who outdragged the Slovenian past pit lane. And the gap between them was three quarters of a second as they hit the line at the end of lap nine. And you can see the gap now on lap 10. Nothing in it between Cairoli, your new race leader, and Tim Geiser. And it is an absolute electric atmosphere here. Every vantage point, even the uh, fans up on the banking above the trees there. Absolutely lapping this one up. 12 minutes plus two to go. Has Tony Cairoli broken? The uh, 243 of Tim Geiser's resolve. Both sets of pit crew urging their men on. The gap goes from 0.7 in one lap to 1.3. Not a lot. 146.4, 147.0. And Geiser feeling now that he has to go for broke. Tony Cairoli made that decision a couple of laps ago. He got himself onto the rear wheel of the Honda rider. And it's now Geiser's turn to respond. As they drop downhill for the 11th time, Paul Land is about 16 and a half seconds behind in third place. He's looking on course for third overall this weekend. His teammate Arna Tonis at Wilvo, uh, Monster Energy Wilvo Yamaha, is right there with him about nine seconds further back in fourth. Jesse Konis for Rockstar Energy has Varna two seconds further back in fifth. Then we've got Ivo Monticelli on the standing construct KTM. He is in sixth place. Tommy Searle for Boss GP, Kawasaki is at seventh. Brian Bogus, Team HRC, first time we've seen him in the top ten this year. He's in eighth. Glenn Coldenoff, nine, and Benoit Pacharel is in tenth place for Kevin Van Venroy, Kawasaki. Alessandro Lupino is in eleventh. Just watch this here just a moment ago. Geiser taking a slightly tighter line, does not want Cairoli to edge any further clearer. But you can see how rutty this track is. Long ruts, top to bottom, breaking bumps within them as well. And the mud is sticky after uh, pretty much two or three days worth of solid rain leading up to Friday. No rain since then, though. And our track crew is doing a fantastic job getting this place in uh, top condition. You might not think that when you see how gnarly and nagery it is, but it's motocross, folks. It does break down. Cairoli has lost his 1.3 second advantage on uh, lap 11. We're in back marker traffic as well. And the gap goes from 1.3 to 0.8 of a second. And this is where Cairoli lost his lead in race one with four laps to go. And Geiser needs the back markers to stay out of the way. He is stalking Cairoli like a piece of prey. Wow. Absolutely nothing in it. Geiser thought about lunging down the inside into the uh, infield hairpin, turn seven. 
He gets good drive out of there as well, doesn't he? That rut doesn't look as deep as it was in race one. And cleaner out of here as well. So Kai Rowley going to the bank, and that is a steep wall as well when you hit that at the top of the hill. Back into the waves, and uh, you see how sticky those ruts are as they head into this turn. Geiser goes to the inside. Kai Rowley read it well as well because uh, he noticed that the uh, line over on the far side of that racetrack, a lap ago, was utilised by Tim Geiser, number 243. Nine minutes plus two to go. These guys, 20 seconds, 21 seconds. Whoa, bubble there from Kai Rowley. How much time did that cost him? Paul Ant, 21.7 seconds down at the start of lap 12. He continues to circulate in third place. Going to be good enough for a podium. If it stays like this, though, Tony Cairoli, of course, will win here for the fourth time. That will equal Jeffrey Hurling's victories around here. More importantly, he will win at home. But Tim Geiser is not going to let him off the hook. Eight and a half minutes plus two laps to go here in Italy. And Cairoli leads just by Tim Geiser. That is the gap with eight minutes plus two to go. Tony Cairoli continues to lead, but for how much longer? Tim Geiser does not want to uh, be the guy that led and got past, but you know what? It's better to do it halfway through the race than it was four laps from home in Tony Cairoli's case. But when you're one of these two riders here, Cairoli or Geiser, second isn't an option. Not when you're at this far ahead of everybody else. Not when you're fighting for the Grand Prix. You've got two world championships with Geiser, nine with Cairoli. And is one of these two riders going to be crown world champion later on this year, yes or no? Is it too early to say, yes or no? Back markers again. Davide de Bartoli, the number 15, will be out of the way there in no time at all. Uh, sorry, Davide Bonini. A slight jab there in the turn, the nervous faces of uh, both sets of uh, team personnel look on from down there in pit lane. They see the images you see. It is an absolute electric atmosphere here. Still has been all day. Always produces great racing. And this time around, it is Tony Cairoli and Tim Geiser who are providing all the drama and all the action here at Trentino. The weather that was supposed to hit around about three o'clock has stayed away. The gap, 0.9 of a second last time around. And Geiser very quick through there again, that final chicane into the final turn. 0.9 again, a fast lap for Geiser, his fastest lap of the race. 100 quicker than Cairoli that time around. Drop down into the infield section. Tony Cairoli and uh, Geiser both get past the back marker without getting held up. See how the ground is breaking down there. Over on that part of the racetrack. What a race we're having here again, folks. Just under six minutes, plus two laps to go. MXGP race two. Cairoli continues to lead, as he has done since lap nine. We are now on lap 14 as the rear end of Tim Geiser's Honda just steps out of line there, misbehaving ever so slightly on one of those uphills. Doing his best to keep Cairoli in his line of sight, in his wheel tracks. And just like race one, you feel a mistake from either rider might decide this outcome here. And are we going to see one or the other just step it up in the uh, next couple of laps here? We've got waved yellows, wheels on the ground. We've got a man down, bike in the middle of the track. And uh, obviously we'll get that cleaned up as best we can in the next few moments. But Tony Cairoli was first to hit that uh, obstacle. And here is Geiser. He's been fast here and he goes up the inside. Geiser leads again on lap 14. Tony Cairoli, I wonder if his concentration was just broken there at the top of the hill. And Geiser caught him napping. 
Oh, Van Geyser! Uh, sorry, Kai Rowley. How did he stay up there? Well, four and a half minutes plus two to go, and we come alive again, folks. He has stalked his prey, and it was Kai Rowley that made a mistake. He's still making mistakes. Geyser just makes a break for it at the bottom end of the circuit. Now, Kai Rowley has to react and respond. He has to pick up all the household possessions, including the kitchen sink. Kai Rowley didn't get good drive, but look at the, uh, the pickup there from the uh, Honda right in front of the pit crew. And the mistakes from Tony. Almost pulling knack-knacks up into turn three. But guess what? He's right there, isn't he? The Sicilian. Oh, both riders again stepping out. These two are pushing the envelope just like they did in race one. They're 33 seconds clear of Gautier Paulin. A wall of noise wherever they go. Geyser and Cairoli. Meanwhile, Tonis four, Jassiconis five, Monticelli, Searle, Coldenoff, Bogas and Lapino. They are your top ten. Right. Which way is this one going to go now? Place your bets. Launching downhill behind the pit lane area. Tim Geiser back in front. Tony Cairoli set the fastest in sector two this time around. Over the line, 15 laps complete. One second in it. And again, he bounces offline there, Cairoli, not able to get up over the uh, step. Two laps in a row. Geiser drifting his way through. Cairoli, I think, had the, uh, the upper hand that time around on the top level of the, uh, the plateau. Back with the action here. Again, nothing in it. Cairoli just over jumping ever so slightly. Doesn't lose too much time, though. Cairoli again almost through the front door like he was in race one. Takes a jab to the inside. It was the shortest route, but he took a chance at the end of the straight there with the 222. This is a fight for the lead and the overall Grand Prix, don't forget, folks. Geiser won race one from Tony Cairoli. If he wins here, that's an outright 1 1 score, 50 points. If Tony wins, then those uh, positions from race one are reversed. And it goes on race two, count back. And Cairoli will de be declared the winner for the fourth straight Grand Prix. Only Geiser has won races other than Tony Cairoli. It was victorious in race two at Matsley Basin, round two. And then he took the race one win away from the Italian here in uh, Italy today. Can he do it again in race two? Back marker staying out of the way. Samuele Bernardini. So we've got three laps to go. And Cairoli closer than he has been the last couple of laps. Is he going to go short and to the right here? Oh, he goes long. He goes to the outside. That was a much better turn for Cairoli. And that will give him that boost of confidence that he needs. He's right on the back of the Honda now. Going for the dirt. Chasing the dirt. A little bit too much. Look, four back markers. Watch this here. Slams the berm. Oh. And almost slams himself into the ground. Goes long at the top of the hill. Again, Geiser knows he's there. Back markers on the horizon. Cairoli decides to go the long way around. Will he jump across and go slightly different line? No, he goes the same line at the end of the straight, but Tony Cairoli not able to find a way through that time around. Two lap forward, getting ready to come out here The Trentino. Good drive from both guys coming out of that left-hander up the first hill over on the far side of the circuit. The corner speed from both these guys this late in the race, absolutely unreal and phenomenal. And you know what? If they're in that turn and Geiser slips a gear, Cairoli's going to run clean into the back of him. And they're both going down. That's how close they are. It's almost MotoGP style. And Cairoli's going to get the... Uh, the run round here because of the back marker just on the line there of Geiser. 
And Geiser goes defensive. Kai Rowley comes around the outside. Oh, he buries his wheels in the ground again, and they almost touch coming over the jump. Kai Rowley goes through. Wow. Geiser tried to close the door. They are on the absolute limit. You cannot take your eyes off of it. Two to go. Oh, Kai Rowley almost off the bike. He was off the bike. And another mistake! Kai Rowley goes down! And that is the GP decided. Kai Rowley picks himself up. Wow! He is distraught. And fair play, Tim Geiser. He stuck to the task. And he took Tony all the way and beyond the level. We said a mistake would decide it here. Geiser knew Kai Rowley was there. He tried to get across the line. But the tenacious character that Kai Rowley is, he was not about to back out of that. Not there, not in race two. He bobbled here. That was the loss of concentration that maybe affected what happened here. He was too high up the bank. And how he did not take out Geiser there with the front coming across the back of the Honda, I have no idea. But Kai Rowley hopefully is OK. But that is a massive psychological blow to him and also a massive boost to Tim Geiser. Still just over a lap to go. And here is Tim Geiser. He is on his way. He just needs to maintain his focus. Tony Cairoli will not be adding a fourth Trentino victory. And Geiser there just... A quick acknowledgement towards the team there as he came past pit lane. The one-lap board goes out. And Geiser takes a tear off nice and cool. His fans are on their feet this side of the track. Tony Cairoli yet to come over the line. That's how much of a dent that crash has had on the Sicilian. They were about 40 seconds clear. Of Gautier Paulin, but Tony Cairoli limping home. 20 or 19 seconds down, he takes a long look over his shoulder. The left hand guard is up in the air, pointing north. We're still waiting for Gautier Paulin to come through, of course. So Cairoli has time in his hand, but what a day, what a performance from Tim Guy. So, yes, it's not over yet. Jeremy C were getting lapped there in 14th place. That is the pace that these guys were pushing here today. And Benoit Pacherel at the bottom of the hill in 13th place. About to get lapped by Tim Geiser. The front end got away from Kai Rowley just when he didn't want to. And we were denied a grandstand finish because of that mistake two laps ago. Geiser won't care about that, though. Up on the pegs. For the final time, he drops downhill. He has silenced the Italian crowd. It will be all noise from the Sublinian contingent here in just a few moments' time. And that is a massive win for Geiser and Team HRC. Only their third victory around here, 1994 and 2015, when Geiser won here in MX2. He does it again here in Italy. This time, he beats the great Kai Rowley, the nine-time world champion. And that is a huge victory. And this place has just gone absolutely crazy. Let him celebrate. Let him celebrate. I know we're live, I know we've got to do live interviews and all that, but just let him have his moment. Both sets of fans, though, appreciate the effort that these two put in, Tony Cairoli and Tim Geiser, and, of course, Cairoli the first to congratulate him. Good job, great to see. Even though Cairoli will be hurting mentally and physically, probably after the, uh, the body slam to the ground there, two laps from home. He will appreciate the effort that Geiser had to put in as well to eventually come home 24 seconds clear. Gautier Paulin, third overall. No reply for those two today, but he'll get his day.
and he'll stand on the third step of the podium here. His teammate comes home in fourth, Arno Tonis, and then uh, Arminas Jasikonis, fifth today. Of course, uh, the podium then belongs to Tim Geiser with two wins, Tony Cairoli second, Gautier Paul and his third, Arno Tonis fourth overall this weekend in Italy. Another epic encounter here in Trentino. Crazy. Well, and amongst all the pandemonium, we will try and grab a word with Tim Geiser, our overall winner. But the guys that have travelled across from Slovenia into Italy, they will... You know what? I don't even think they'll make it home tonight. They have not been... Uh, They've not been disappointed, and they will party long into the night. Anyway, Lisa Leyland is down in the winner's enclosure, getting ready to speak to our overall winner, Tim Geiser. Here he is. Tim Geiser, congratulations. Wow, wow, what a race, what a victory. You pushed, you pushed, you never gave up, and you broke Tony on his home soil. Tell us how much this victory means to you. Just unbelievable, just unbelievable. I'm speechless, like... We had such an amazing race, like we were like playing cat and mouse, like I kind of like leave him and to pass me because he was so fast because he was following me and then I tried to follow him to see where he was faster. Such an amazing race, I'm so happy and so, so proud of anyone. everyone over there, like they were amazing, so unbelievable, unbelievable. <laughs> it was fantastic, congratulations. Tim Geiser, your overall winner here. He takes his first Grand Prix victory of the season as well. Keeps his 100% podium uh, record intact. Second in round one, second round two, third in the Netherlands a week ago. But he comes away with a win here this weekend. And for Tim Geiser, that's his 16th Grand Prix victory. And no better place to do it than right here at Trentino. So, race two, classification. Tim Geiser and Team HRC Victorious, head of the Red Bull KTM of Tony Cairoli, the Monster Energy Wilbo Yamahas of Paul Ant and Tonus, and the Rockstar Energy Husqvarna of Jassiconis. Monticelli for standing construct KTM. What a Grand Prix he's had. Fifth overall for the uh, tiny Italian. Kodanoff, his teammate, was 7th, Searle, 8, Bogus, 9, and Lupino, 10. And we had Simpson, Lieber, Pacharel, Siwa, Brudikoff, Leoc, Boutron, Bernardini, Jonas, and Rauschenecker in the points. Geiser takes the overall, Cairoli 2nd, Paulin 3rd, Tonus 4th, and Monticelli 5th overall this weekend. Wow, fantastic ride for him. Championship lead before this weekend was uh, 22 points. Tony Cairoli just losing six to uh, Tim Geiser this weekend, of course, with those two race wins. 25 for a win, 22 for second, 20 for third, etc., etc. Manufacturers' Championship looks like this. KTM on 191, Honda on 177, Yamaha third. Kawasaki Husqvarna there in fifth. But the atmosphere, the noise, always spectacular here within the uh, Trentino region and under the Dolomite mountain range. Take a look at the foxhole shot then, shall we? Tim Geiser takes his first foxhole shot of the season. And guess what? He turned it into a win to add to the win from race one. And an overall victory here at Trentino. The fourth round of the FIA Motocross World Championship. Cairoli, though, has more black plates, but that'll be the least of his worries. He will uh, be kicking himself after that mistake that allowed Geiser off the hook with just about two laps to go. And you can see what it means to the Honda Top Brass and mechanics down there. And uh, instead of the red, white, and green, we're going to get the red and yellow flares right there in front of the podium. 
if we can see it. <laughs> Change camera angle. There we go. There's a different shot. Anyway, third overall this weekend. Gautier Paulin, Monster Energy Wilbo Yamaha. His second visit to the podium. Third in Great Britain, third here. Round two and round four. And uh, obviously, no match for the two guys ahead of him this weekend. But second overall, what a fight he put up. And he almost came away with a victory as well. But Tony Cairoli, Red Bull KTM Factory Racing. Second overall, yeah, hobbling away. He hit the ground hard. Two second place finishes for him. But for Tim Geiser and Team HRC, listen to the roar of the crowd here. What a win that is for Tim Geiser. Not one win, but two race wins here today. And that is a massive result. And you know what? Podiums here never disappoint, do they? Whether you're here or not, to be honest. We'll probably get something similar in Mentiva as well in about five weeks' time when we return to action with MXGP. But podiums in MXGP like nothing you will ever experience anywhere else in the world. But this weekend, Tim Geiser, the man who stands on the top step of the podium. And that's the first time that uh, Cairoli has been defeated this season. Outright, of course. Vittorio Trevezzi, the mayor of Dro. Thank you, sir, for letting us race dirt bikes in your part of the world this weekend. Roberto Faioni, Trentino Sport Tourism Assessor. Again, thank you for letting us uh, bring MXGP to this part of the world. Fantastic location and what a fantastic, crazy atmosphere, as always. I don't think I've been to one where it's been dull. But Tim Geiser takes the top step. He takes the winner's trophy. The team HRC, Giovanni Coppioli, the FMI president. And, uh, of course, the team owned by an Italian, Giacomo Garibaldi. Proudly holds that trophy aloft here on the podium as winning team, Team HRC. Well, he may have only finished second overall this weekend, but Tony Cairoli continues to lead the championship. He uh, receives a red plate from uh, Antonio Alia Portella, the FIM CMS director. All we have to do now is uh, national anthem time. Tim Geiser and Slovenia. this weekend, the National Anthem of Japan. weekend round four of the FIM motocross world championship the MXGP of Trentino at Pietro Morata Tim Geiser takes a, a double win here <laughs> for Team HRC Tony Cairoli Red Bull KTM second overall Gautier Paul and Monster Energy will go Yamaha of course uh, they'll do their thing on the podium let's check out some of the best moments and when we return it will be with Lisa Leyland with our winners
Right, here's Lisa Leyland with our winner, Tim Geiser. Tim Geiser is back. That was fantastic. It was brilliant. It kept everyone on the edge of their seat, especially for your supportive fans. Just tell us, what was it like out there for you? Yeah, it was just an unbelievable race, like I mentioned before. Uh, I had a good start. I was up front and then leading, and then Tony was behind me, and then we pushed really hard. And then we switched places a couple of times, and then on the end, it was just unbelievable. After like more than a year, I won the GP, and uh, we had a tough two years, uh, but we never give up. So we always fight hard, and I'm really happy and thankful uh, that we are here. Congratulations. Thanks, Tim. Second overall today, we have Tony Cairoli. Tony, despite some fantastic racing, you really kept all your fans entertained, perhaps pushing a little bit too hard towards the end, but you still have that red plate and put in a fantastic performance. No, I'm, uh, I'm, I'm, I'm happy about the, for sure about the, the weekend, but uh, of course uh, not happy about that second model. Uh, we ride uh, very, very fast and uh, it was very dangerous, uh, the, the speed and uh, I was a little bit, uh, some, some places uh, too aggressive in some places and I risked to crash a couple of times. So I, uh, I'm a little bit disappointed of my ride because it's not necessary to take some risk like this. And uh, I crashed after I, before this uh, at the Geyser fence on the corner, I twist my left knee or after I just passed a uh, team. And then uh, on the next corner, I felt so a lot of pain in the corner. So I couldn't really uh, lay my bike down. So I went a little bit on the crest and, uh, and then I fall quite hard. So. Not really happy with this crash, it shouldn't happen, but uh, overall I'm okay. Team rode uh, amazing today and uh, he deserved this win. So let's uh, see everybody in Mantua in, uh, next next month. Great job, thanks Tony. Third overall today we have Gautier Paulan. Gautier, there was a lot going on in front of you, but it really doesn't matter. You rode your own race, two solid performances, two third place finishes, second podium for you and valuable championship points on Dassault. Sure, you know, I really want to thank the full Monster Energy Vivo Yama and XGP team because we've done a great job. It's tough, you know, three races in a row and uh, um, yeah, it was good. Uh, I think Tim uh, was just faster today. Antonio uh, second faster and myself third faster. This is the, the result. Uh, I felt great all weekend. Uh, just try to catch the wheel from the guys, you know, I need to, to, to actually catch the wheels from the guys. I need to have a better start to directly get on a good rhythm and uh, more intensity. So we'll work on that for the um, few months uh, coming up to, to be with them. This is definitely where we enjoy racing, uh, you know, on that limit. And when I was hearing the public and stuff and I was alone, it was a bit like, wow, you know, I need to, to give up and uh, I don't need to give up and I really just need to step up. So we'll continue working hard and uh, I'm sure we can do it with the full crew. Thanks. Good. Congratulations. Well, what a day we've had here in Trentino, round four of the FIA Motocross World Championship. Third overall for Gautier Paulin and uh, Monster Energy Wilvo Yamaha. Two solid third place finishes, as he said. Uh, Geiser was fastest today. Cairoli was second. He was the third fastest and he had the two third place finishes. But uh, wow, what a treat we had. Tony Cairoli, second overall. He came so close to a potential win, a potential fourth race uh, victory here, but it was not to be. He was denied on his Rebel KTM by a man who was just superhuman today. Tim Geiser and Tim HRC. He was not going to be denied the overall win. He won race one. He did not want to let it slip in race two. He fought and he pushed Tony Cairoli right to the edge. Cairoli said the pace was uh, way too quick today and he was having to take risks. But you know what? Tim Geiser, he won't care about that either. He leaves here as a double race winner. His second Trentino victory. And he closes down the championship by six more points on Cairoli. Well, thanks for watching this weekend here, round four. We'll be back at the MXGP of Lombardia at Mantova in about a month's time. Thanks for watching. My name's Paul Malin. We'll see you then. Bye for now.